Um, so uh, what what goes on, you know, in this kind of uh, little war between the phones is that they all have different design philosophies, and so. Um, one thing that I think Google is doing to uh, filter out uh, bad apps from good apps in the search is to check what APIs you're using in your apps to make sure that you're conforming to their stuff and automatically and giving you points to their search and, and you can get more face time on their market and things like that. And people will spend more time in your app because it conforms to their system. iPhone and, uh, both iPhone and uh, Windows Phone 7, and pretty much all the phones do this. So I'm going to go over real quick uh, what um, Android expects of you, and then we'll uh, dig into some of the API demos. Um, is anybody developing an Android app right now that they are looking to put on the market? Anyone? All right, so this might be good uh, if you're beginning on Android app development. Um, okay, so uh, basically this, this information is on their website, uh, however, um, their detail, they might not be going into why they're, they're doing these things as much, um, or at least uh, from my viewpoint. So um, I'm just going to go through these. Uh, so on their, on their site they have this uh, idea of enchant me, simplify my life, and make me amazing. And uh, so they, they tell you, make your icons works of art in their own right, and uh, um, make sure that your apps are fast and effective, uh, never require complex procedures to be simple. Um, apps should make the user's life simpler. Um, and uh, make me amazing, uh, you know, not enough to make an app easy to use, you have to empower the user. So um, these things are kind of things that they, they want you to uh, subscribe to while, while making these apps. Um, and so you'll see uh, in the demos to come that these, uh, when they say, you know, delight me in surprising ways and, and uh, make objects over buttons and menus, um, they're talking about you know, animations and, uh, and kind of giving that ooh factor for, for an application. And these are some things that are not really, um, a lot of things are built into the OS. So, for example, um, Windows Phone 7 will do a kind of ladder effect where going from view to view, they, they do something directly in the operating system to, to show bits of one screen and bits of another screen while it's transitioning over, where you wouldn't get that with something like uh, jQuery Mobile or something along those lines. And so they build these things into their OSs so that they have, uh, you know, they have this differentiation between applications. <coughs> Um, so, uh, one of the things that they want you to do is allow the user to uh, do customizations within your app um, and uh, also uh, learn from users' previous inputs. And so these are uh, the customizations, kind of a, a, a maybe an easy one to do, uh, but the, the get to know me thing is, is quite a, kind of an interesting idea. Um, you'll see these with like uh, websites like Pandora Radio or something along those lines where they, they take your favorites and then relate and you know, give you uh, music suggestions based on what you've taken. And so this is a really good concept to include in any app, not just in Android applications. Um, uh, so constantly think about ways that you can store data about a user so that you can guess what they're, they're going to want to do. Uh, and if you do that well, people will choose your app over other ones. Um, then you want to uh, you know simplify things by keeping your messages brief. Um, make sure that you use cloud services to uh, to save user data because um, if they lose your app, if they you know log in with a you know open authentication uh, system, you're and they switch phones, they're going to lose all the data, and then they'll be likely to possibly never use your app again if they like somebody else's and their data was stored on that app because they'll try a bunch out and then somebody will be prone to sticking with what they had before. Um, and then the pictures are faster than words. This is another key concept. You want to make sure that uh, you use as many really easy to understand pictures. And that's kind of what the Windows Phone thing is doing with the, with the Metro style is that they, they're taking street signs, which is like their, their big thing is uh, 
but it's still the case for the other phones, and they actually say it right here. So there's there's quite a bit of overlap between the phones, um, as I'll talk about in a minute. Um, also, uh, this is this is kind of going along the lines of learning from your user, but um, uh, you know, decide for me, but let, let me have the final say. So figure out what the user wants to do before they do it, but then they'll allow them to cancel out. Um, anybody can stop me if they have questions. I think we're a small enough crowd today. <laughs> um, then also, uh, you only show what I need when I need it. Um, this concept, uh, and you'll actually notice that the, this bar at the bottom here, um, if you've seen and the differences between Android 3 and Android 4, um, this is their new bar, which is very similar to the Windows uh, navigation bar. Um, uh, so that there's going to be heavy overlap there, but these are things that you have to build in, built in to your app to interact with the operating system. Um, and I think this is to, to uh, start weeding out people who are doing cross-platform development. I think they want to stop the, the cross-platform development and, and push more on uh, native development. For applications. Uh, so I should always know where I am. Um, this is kind of the thing like the the Windows Phone back button and the home button on iPhone and the uh, Android back button act pretty completely differently really um, and so it's specifically taken from Android and Windows Phone um, Android's back button will go to a previous page, where Windows Phone and still uh, um, maintain some sort of uh, information uh, um, on that page kind of thing, so you can like still move forward, where uh, Windows Phone back button is kind of like a, a dead stop to certain, uh, in certain situations, and a lot of the time will close out of, uh, will end processes. Um, where Android attempts to, to avoid doing that. Um, never lose my stuff, as we said before, cloud services. And that's a big, that's a big one for all of the apps out there, not just uh, uh, Android. Is they, they all push cloud services. Cloud is, is the biggest thing at the moment. So um, the idea would be, and you, you, you could even store the data on your server and just have worldwide users, it's just cloud can distribute faster. That's why they, they push it so hard, is because they have you know servers on uh, every location. Um, and if it looks the same, it should act the same. Uh, they have certain ties into the operating system that we'll cover today. And uh, these ties in the operating system all are supposed to act the same no matter where you are, like what application you are. So um, if you're dealing with images, emails, or anything along those lines, getting a list should always come from this uh, display here. Um, finally, uh, only interrupt the user if it's important. Never display errors, only display notifications. You know, alerts are bad, <coughs> toasts are bad, you know. Um, so the idea would be to, to be non-invasive, but still uh, give information to the user. Um, you know, giving tricks that work everywhere, that's kind of uh, interpretable um, to anyone out there. Uh, basically, just little things that they can learn about your app to make everything really easy, but uh, not necessarily um, taking away from the operating systems stuff. Also, it's not my fault. Um, so this one, you know, I was just, we were just talking about the, uh, the GPS on Windows Phone 7 on the way here, how it's, it sounds very angry when you make a wrong turn on Windows Phone, but it doesn't sound <laughs> angry at all on Android. So um, this is something that's more on the, the Android side of it, is to never tell the user that they're wrong, just give them helpful hints to point them in the right direction. Um, so uh, <coughs> programmers, you know, I don't know, programmers are a little more abrasive than that, so I don't know if we, we can really uh, understand why they want us to do such things, but it, they ask us to anyway. Um, and that goes to say with sprinkle encouragement, so it's kind of like the, the Pavlov's dogs thing where they, you, know, you give a little animation to encourage a user, but um, you, don't, you don't say that they did something wrong, you just kind of say, well, you might get a treat if you do it correctly. And you know, they'll eventually um, kind of buy into that. Um, and then do the heavy lifting for me, meaning that any, any complicated tasks automatically